I think it's always very hard to learn lessons from Rome, learn direct lessons. I don't think that certainly there's much where we can say, oh look, the Romans did that and we should do it too. There are, I have to say, quite a lot of things where the Romans did things extremely badly. I, you know, um, I wouldn't have fancied being a woman in the Roman Empire, and I certainly wouldn't have fancied being a slave. Um, so we can see them as, um, uh, as offering a, a rather anti-model of how you should uh, treat uh, women and the conquered. And I think that Rome, makes us think differently about some of the problems that we have and which they face too. One of those most obviously uh, and particularly relevant, you know, at the beginning of the 21st century is ideas of migration and citizenship. Uh, currently, uh, refugees, asylum seekers, economic migrants, one of the biggest crises that certainly the continent of Europe, but also the world more widely faces. Uh, it's, I think for me, very instructive to look back to Rome and to see in, uh, to see in Rome a world where there was no such thing as an illegal migrant. I mean, that would have been absolutely incomprehensible to a Roman where there was free movement of people, where people were granted citizenship by the Romans very freely. There was no such thing as a citizenship test. You didn't have to salute the flag. You didn't have to sing the national anthem. You didn't have to pay a fee. Uh, Rome was an incorporating society. And indeed, when Rome thought about its very origins, you know, who founded Rome, and they told, you know, elaborate, fantastic, mythical stories, like the story of Romulus and Remus, you know, who founded Rome after being, after being discovered and suckled by the wolf on the banks of the Tiber, or a different story, but um, equally popular, how the Roman race was founded by Aeneas, who had been a Trojan hero in the great war between the Greeks and the Trojans at Troy, and Aeneas had fled from Troy to find a, a new city in Italy when his own had been defeated. You look at those kind of stories, you discover that Romans are imagining their origins in terms of being a home for refugees. Uh, like Aeneas. And very interestingly, when Romulus actually founds the city that was on the site of Rome itself, uh, and he looks around and he thinks, help, I haven't got any citizens, um, apart from you know, a couple of lads and <laughs> nothing much more, uh, what does he do? He puts up a notice and sends messages around saying, Rome is a place of asylum. Any runaway, any criminal, any asylum seeker can come to Rome and be a Roman citizen. Now, it's extraordinary, and perhaps rather more like um, some American founding myths than some British founding myths. It's quite extraordinary to see, for me, a, a culture which traces its origin back to migrants and refugees and asylum seekers. Now, I think it's very important to say we can't just uh, take that as a model of what to do ourselves. You know, it would be you know, slightly crazy to say, oh, because Rome was an open, cities, open city and welcomed asylum seekers, etc. So should we? You know, we're living in a different world. But I think what's important is simply the realization that there is another culture back there that had a very, very different view from the view that we now tend to hold. And it helps you put that view, your own view, in perspective. It helps you to see that view from the outside. You know, the Romans would look at us and they'd look at what's happening on the beaches of Europe and the Mediterranean Sea, uh, you know, their world, and they would be amazed and horrified, you know, just as we're horrified by some of the things that they did. Mm -hmm.